Oh wait, no longer greatness has arrived. Welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I am your host, Joseph, a.k.a. Mr. Badbit, and it is here where me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest, the greatest in all things PlayStation. Of course, you can listen to the show wherever you find your podcast and on YouTube at the Trophy Room channel. If you like what you hear, please consider dropping us a five-star review over at Apple Podcasts, or if you really, really like us, toss us a buck our way over at patreon.com slash PS Trophy Room. So with all that said, and with all that out of the way, the greatest co-host whoever is, whoever will be, Mr. Kyle Stevenson, how are you, say? I'm doing well, yeah. and I want to start the show off yeah. with a very happy sixth birthday slash anniversary to Batman Arkham Knight. Turned six oh. years old today. Um, a game that is... Pr- Looked back on by a lot of people as not one of the best Batman games, I feel like, overall. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I personally love it. Besides the, the Batmobile tank, which I know everyone gets some, gives it some flack. But that story, those performances, that Gotham City map is one of the best ever. And uh, I, man, special, special game. I was going to say, I actually have like fond memories of that game. That you know, usually Arkham games are games that I I play midway through and then I kind of just drop them, just because yeah. I'm usually really bad at those games. That happened with Arkham City because of that gosh dang Batmobile. But I remember stopping halfway through because my brother was progressing so much farther than me because those are those are his games, Kyle. Like that's sure, yeah, yeah. That's what he he loves. So I would just sit back watch him play batman and we just kind of bond you know between brothers so that's what my memory has of the batman arkham games i personally enjoy them a lot yeah i was going through arkham asylum i remember the Mm -hmm. lull last year i need to still get back to that but where would you rank it in this grand scheme of things arkham city of of the arkham oh arkham knight turn six sorry sit not city oh i'm so sorry Um, arkham knight i I confuse it uh oh boy it's tough. They're all real close to each other, mm-hmm. but I I think right now my my standard my oh my god my standings would be probably city first, right? Asylum, night, and then origins. Okay, but they're but all or, good. like they're all within like po- decimals of each other. Yeah. Like in my opinion, their origins is fantastic. Night yeah. is yeah, they're all great. Yeah, because I know, like, usually people would be like, it's uh, Asylum City, Night, and Origins. That's how I, that's that's the energy or, or, I read. Yeah, or most people don't even acknowledge Origins as part uh-huh. of the Arkham universe, just because it's not made by Rocksteady. Fair. Um, can't believe that game had a multiplayer mode. That was did, weird. It did? Yeah, man. You were the inmate, I think you were Joker's gang versus Penguin's gang. Oh my god. Okay. And it was like a... It was like a shooter, like a third person shooter. No way. Like, I believe so. I'll look up screenshot. I never played it. You got some Gotham City imposters going on, is what you're telling me, Kyle? <laughs> but I know like I can never get that platinum because they had multiplayer trophies and it's oh, wow. been long shut off. Well, rightfully so. That said though, we're not here to talk about Arkham anything this week. I'm saving my energy. You can see I'm kind of reserved, right? Right now. Like I'm kind of I'm kind of just yeah, just just chill because we got a lot of excitement. I feel like Kyle, this episode was tailored made for me. I got a lot of excitement to share. This so, week, so sh- selfish of you. So <laughs> selfish. Of you. I really, honestly, when I think about this week, we're talking about PlayStation experience possibly being revived. When we're talking about from software's Project Velvet Veil. When we talk about Dead Space Revival, and we're finally, hopefully, soon, getting to know what the heck Blue Box Studios really is, I feel like this, there's so much excitement for me. And I just, I think about where, where are you going to be this episode? This is going to be a different episode for you, Kyle. This is going to be probably maybe even the most challenging you'd ever have this week. 
me what yeah. challenging like in a detrimental way like i'm bringing the show down no or, like i because uh, you don't or me staying involved and engaged involved and engaged <laughs> because listen you're not a from guy I'm dead not. space i don't think you, you never played dead space right i had that I, I i played dead space one i think i said on the podcast but i played it during the summer months at night and when the lights went out in the game, we also lost power at the same time, and it freaked oh. me the hell out, and oh, I never beautiful. went back. I never oh. went back. I would it was like a like... thunderstorm, and it just shut everything down for hours. <laughs> like, really? Now? Yep. Now is when you're going to go out, Power? No, no, no. <laughs> Nana, no, no, no. grab the shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> There's necromorphs. Necro what? Just get the shotgun. <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. I, I texted you the other day, though, when you were... Because, again, you keep Sending me Elden Ring stuff. Yeah. <laughs> just like, hey, just out of blue, just a screenshot. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God. And like, Joe, you are so lucky. I just once, yeah. just once, want a, a dream of mine to come true. You're mm -hmm. getting so many dreams coming true yeah. that I'm left out in the cold and it hurts. Well, just like we're, better games. And you With said that, that I want to thank our patrons. Joe. <laughs> my blood boiled. <laughs> Before we get into all that, I want to talk about our patrons over at patreon.com slash PS Trophy Room. Like we say each and every week, if we ever got you through a long car ride, a tough day at work, whatever the situation may be, it'd be greatly appreciated. You go to patreon.com slash PS Trophy Room, toss us a buck our way, like all of our amazing patrons over there. I want to thank our platinum producers, Todd Berwitz and Too Soon, our gold producers, Chaotic Monkey, Gavin Gottfried, Griffin West, Jose Jimenez, Jedi Master Ren, Metal Kirby, and Robbie Bobby Miller himself. I want to thank our Silver Plus members hide indoors Magachaka. marcus o'neill oh it's just ray jb the purple monkey jadas von metal tim ulf justin rodriguez and awesome dave thank you all so much for making this show possible and of course i always like to tease there are a few things coming to the production side of this show making us sound better look making us look better and it's all because of your amazing patronage so thank you all so very much much and with that kyle oh it is time <laughs> oh it's time kyle it's time to square up the news are you with me buddy sure <laughs> that was such a pregnant pause and you're strike one <laughs> let's get right. into it I'd like to see you like put me in timeout or something, or just like I have to mute myself for five minutes and just mm -hmm. watch you do the. I have to sit here and watch you talk about yeah. these games. <laughs> no the choice, show. Kyle. <laughs> no choice. Uh, the first bit of news we have to square up is from Zarmina Khan over at PS Lifestyle. Sony has filed a trademark application for PSX. Remember PlayStation Experience? It looks like Sony Interactive Entertainment has it. Oh, I hasn't completed. Oh my God, Kyle, read English a little bit better there, sir. There was no comma for pause. Let me restart that. <laughs> Remember PlayStation Experience? It looks like Sony Inter Interactive Entertainment hasn't completely shelved the event after all, as folks over at Gaming Route spotted a recently filed trademark application for PSX. According to the United States Patent and Trademark Office, the USPTO, the application was filed last Friday, June 11th. Sony has been hosting its digital state of play events, but they certainly haven't fi filled the void left behind by PSX, which was last held in 2018 in Bangkok, Thailand. In the U.S., the last event was held in 2017. Hey, I was there. Oh. It's possible that Sony is considering a physical return, but with many companies now opting for digital events, an online showcase is more of a possibility than a physical event at present. So it is weird because we're still in a global panorama. Of things returning to normal. Like, it's weird for me when I'm driving and there's traffic. <laughs> I, I take a look at the town center and I'm like, wow, there are people here. Some of them yeah. not wearing masks. And that's still weird to me right now. I'll yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Me going to, like, the post office to pick up mail. I see people without masks on. Yeah. And I think I'm ahead, man, we are still in this parallelogram. I don't understand <laughs> exactly. why you're just walking around all free, free Nelly. Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, it's, there's an era of like non-trust, right? It's kind of like, we're going back to like when the necromorphs <laughs> may have been at your house. Like, Grandma, get the shotgun. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can trust this. Um, <laughs> that said, it's, it's 
interesting that again we're still in this and they're filing a trademark for PlayStation experience and coming out of E3 which was still a digital event which we're still seeing all these pe- like like uh, not people companies have and host these digital events like EA is going to have one next month which we'll talk about in in a moment um do you think let's let's tackle this first one here do we think that PlayStation experience is a digital event or is it a physical event? I think it very well could be a digital one. Mm-hmm. I I think I wouldn't I wouldn't be shocked about it. Like I I, I wouldn't be shocked either if it was an in-person thing later this year cuz PAX West I believe is going to be in person. Yeah. Uh in a few months. The, I think that was just announced, which is cool. Um yeah, I, I can see it both ways. I do have a feeling though this might be the the name of their big summer showcase. Like mm-hmm. if they're not going to do E3, then they're going to call it the PlayStation experience and tie it to the app that already exists, which again is big brain moves dealing with another story. We're going to talk about yeah. uh, it a little bit later about when that might happen. Um, yeah. I, I think PlayStation experience is a great name and it, it's a great event too. Like that, that show that weekend holds a very special place in mm-hmm. in my life and in my heart. That was uh, that weekend. I went to Disney for the first time and actually saw magic in like in front of my eyes. The Disney like magic. literal magic, like bunny yeah, out of hat, yeah, man, absolutely conjuring water into wine absolutely. and all that stuff. Absolutely, you walk yeah. through Disney, that just happens oh, wherever wow. you look. Uh, <laughs> but that also was like the first event that I covered for the show. That's like true. and I wasn't even the permanent co-host. Like mm-hmm. I went on that one time. I mentioned I was going, and you're like, "Hey, I'll have you back when you come back, and we'll talk about the games you played." Yeah. And here we are, here three, we are. three, and almost three and a half years later. Um, you, you think if that event didn't happen, would you be would you be the co-host of the show? You tell me. <laughs> was I that bad oh. in that first episode that? The one little thing was I was going to PSX. I really no 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 no. I know that for I I I know the day. I was very excited. Like I was mm-hmm. very excited to have you out. I remember that walking out of the communications wing of of my university. Th- that said, it's sh- I wish also I, we still had that episode. It's it's gone yeah, to oh, the it's annals gone? of history. Oh, yeah, man, that's a bummer. That's a real big bummer because we had to switch feeds. Anyway, that's you know what? right. That's, that's not PSX. But yeah, no? PSX PSX <laughs> is exciting, yes. digital or not. Because yeah, if you want to really geek out about PlayStation, PSX is the thing to do, the yeah. place to be, the the thing to stay tuned to. It was like a mini E three presentation anyway at PSX some years with their their showcase like last was part two was yeah. re- revealed at psx oh. and that was huge yeah. what a great reveal i'm getting goosebumps Goose- just thinking yeah. about that <laughs> totally that insane. that camera shot backing out mm-hmm. and you see the stop sign with the firefly logo mm-hmm. and then you get that trailer oh, oh. boy oh, oh. am Kyle, i playing stop. last was part two again i think Is we that are what's happening? i'm prepared to get depressed <laughs> uh, i think i think you're onto something because the one thing that i get very jealous of our xbox brethren is Game Fest. Like they have their thing Absolutely. during E3 where it's uh or Fan Fest, sorry. Where it's just like they have it across the the street from E3. It's all the Xbox booths cuz technically Xbox isn't really a part of E3. It's just like across the street. Anyway, nonetheless, you're out there celebrating Xbox. They're giving out free headsets and stuff and swag and all that stuff. It's awesome. And everybody's there and there's a sense of community because they all are passionate about Xbox. And so you're meeting people, you, you're you meeting influencers, you're having a really good time. And I feel like that's what PlayStation Experience was as well. Like, you know, you're you're having all these news junkets out there. You're meeting people that all love I, that I have my thing. PlayStation cards up there, my deck of cards that you would get at the event. I have a real platinum trophy card in there. Yeah. So, like... That's super cool. Again, it's like a, it's why we love Astro's Playroom. It's mm-hmm. why uh, we love the IPs that PlayStation has is because it's a long history and there's a lot to like be nostalgic over and yeah. excited about. And it's it's there at PSX, at least from my memory of it. Yeah. And so for me, I'm <laughs> I kind of want it to be a physical space, but I do also know that we're still in what we're in right now. And. 
I I don't know the necessity of of naming thing a state of play like something that's really big. Like I know when they talked about or the, they revealed the PS5, it was the future of games. Yeah. Right. Something very pompous, <laughs> and and it wasn't a state of play. It was something else. So having a a hub every year of like here is our digital big event. Maybe even come over to the PlayStation Theater or whatever. But yeah. here's this big event that we can all go to. But right now, we could watch digitally to mm-hmm. celebrate the biggest things that are happening in PlayStation right now. I yeah, think that would be and, a huge, huge cool thing. And and by using PSX as like their showcase and their, uh, you know, putting trailers on an app with more information on all the games you saw, having them all in one spot for easy, easy to find. And then using the state of play thing for those deep dives of like Horizon and Ghosts and Last of Us got like, I'd be totally okay with that. Just yeah. a 15, 20 minute state of play here and there of just like, here's what this game looks like more in depth and the, some of the mm-hmm. mechanics and whatnot. Like I, I love when they do those things. And I think that will also help Sony out where it's, if state of play is only going to be on one game, it's going to help other people tuning in. Like where's the last of us three. Yeah. Where's the next uncharted. Oh, that sucks. They didn't show this. They didn't show that. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. Like, I think it would help like from a, communication side of things absolutely and in you know i don't know if i talked about this on last week's show if i did i apologize but the one thing i do like from playstation out of the past few years is you know it took a little bit of time to find its footing but i really do feel like state of plays are now such something we expect and something we want you know like we take a look at nintendo directs in the same light it, it is kind of like light speed, light speed, the way that they have kind of navigated what these little directs, these little mini things are. And that's why, like, having something that is a PlayStation experience and you're coming out a week after E3 and you're like, no, this is our big thing. You have all your showcases. This is this is us. I think it's I think that could be PlayStation's big equivalent to E3. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I could also totally see it being a, uh, and I know they've had this in this in the past. I don't know if it was like a specific name, but mm-hmm. having like a tour bus called the PlayStation Experience, <laughs> where it stops in different towns and you can go check out the latest games or yeah. PSVR or whatnot, like yeah. that could also be what this is, uh, which would be a big letdown. I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I'm 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 excited to, you know, for the future of this because I've been to PSX once. I wish I can go every month because yeah. it was incredible just being surrounded by PlayStation games and people that love PlayStation and people that I look up to that talk about PlayStation on a regular basis basis for a job, you know, being around uh, people like I saw Shuhei, mm-hmm. like seeing game developers like Tim Schafer when before Xbox bought yeah, Double before Fine he was, was there with Gang Beast. <laughs> <laughs> just like it, it was, it's just super, super cool. Yeah. And I, that is, I mean, it, it's hard to say like I want it right now because we are still in this paint by numbers situation going on. So. But yeah. like it, it would it would give me something to get like super excited for like maybe in December when I'm more comfortable yeah maybe we I, we go into December I don't know yeah we'll see we'll see absolutely it got me thinking the reason why I was laughing is because I almost for a job drove one of those buses not like a PlayStation oh really but like okay. yeah it was like a Oscar p- Mayer uh, Wienermobile kind of but it was kind of like one of those third party services of like you bring you bring this huge truck full of like video game consoles to like parties so kids would play oh yeah 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 but the thing i while driving genius it, idea by the way absolutely genius idea. sure like. scary driving it because the thing like the wheel oh. the wheel was shifted like to mm-hmm. the to the right several degrees and i'm like they're like yeah so you could drive this on the highway right like you feel comfortable i'm like i feel like this is <laughs> I could take a life. So I I very much backed out of it. It was was too scary. God bless those huge, like, 18 wheelers, man. Oh, my God. How did they do it? Yeah. 
<laughs> nerve wracking. That said, Kyle, here's more. Here's here's more of an experience, but just for me. Because I would want to talk to you about, <laughs> oh, what would be the thing you want to see at PlayStation Experience? But I feel like we're about to talk about that thing, Kyle. Sure. Uh, Connor Sheridan over at Games Radar writes, New From Software PS5 exclusive called Velvet Veil vale may have leaked, but the rumors are shaky. A new From Software rumor indicates the Dark Souls studio has a new PS5 exclusive coming after Elden Ring, but the whole thing is worth tucking into a barrel of salt and letting cure for a while before you get your hopes up. The rumor, as spotted by OP Attack, comes from Rune Carlo Silva on Twitter, who explains in Portuguese about a project in the works at From Software codename Velvet Veil. Vale. According to the source, Velvet Veil vale is being created in collaboration with PlayStation Studios and planned as a PS5 exclusive. While it sounds like it will directly tie in with any previous From Software projects, it is considered a spiritual successor to Bloodborne. Silva then provided an image that shows a previous Reddit conversation with their apparent source, where the leaker discussed details about Elden Ring, a Dark Souls remaster, and Deracine, all before they were announced. Now here's where it gets complicated. According to Reddit user E underscore zero, they're the one who shared the conversation with Silva cites as proof of the leaker's previous accurate calls, but E underscore zero did not post anything about Velvet Veil. Vale. They're not saying the rumors about Velvet Veil vale itself are false, just that they're not involved with them. But if the image that serves as the bedrock for why we should believe anything about this alleged Velvet Veil vale leak isn't actually related to the Velvet Veil vale leak, then the whole thing gets shaky very quickly. There's also a 4chan thread that was posted shortly before Silva's Twitter thread and shares many of the same details, but it doesn't say anything about those Reddit DMs. And it's rarely a good idea to just believe anything you read on 4chan. And this is me, not not Connor. Just don't ever go to 4chan. How about that? <laughs> Honestly, like, uh, like yeah, because I heard it's just the worst. Yeah, no. It's the fastest what, what? way to get... On the FBI what's his, list. What's his know? face was supposed to protect uh, Mark. people? Mark, Shout yeah. Out. Mark Shout from T H Q Nordic was supposed to. Well, no, it was 8chan because it was like somehow worse than oh, 4chan, but then it got sure. closed down because. Yeah, know, multiples things. of four, whatever. It still sucks. <laughs> that said, Kyle, listen, this is the thing I want to see at whatever the PlayStation experience is because it's been five years, two months. And 30 days ago, so you could technically round this up to five years and three months since the launch of Bloodborne. And I'm, write it down. Put it down. It's a tally. I forgot oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm taking tallies, yeah. by the way, everybody, <laughs> of how many times Joe says Bloodborne and mentions yeah. a date countdown, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Elden Ring, everything. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Trust me, you're going <laughs> to, there's going to be a lot of tallies on this one. A lot of red in my ledger, Kyle. This gets me very whelmed. Don't get me oh. wrong. Okay. I'm the Bloodborne guy, Tally. But <laughs> I keep the same energy. I don't see a trailer. I don't have hard sources. Even this one, they're just like, hey, this is shaky at best. Right? There's a part of me that says somebody wants this for SEO. Mm. The other part of me that thinks this is shaky is that I don't see an IGN or GameSpot article about this. And if IGN and GameSpot aren't talking about this, probably means they don't want their reputation harmed by this. So uh, if it if it's proven false. So I don't think that there's hard evidence to back this up. That sure. saddens me because mm -hmm. it is more of a, it's, this is something we've wanted for a very long time. There's also a, a, a you know one user that said that there is a remaster in the works, but Ooh, nothing okay. of a sequel, because From Software wants to own the IP. From Software mm -hmm. doesn't own the IP of of Bloodborne, so or something along the, those lines. So, to me, I don't I I'm talking about this leak because everybody shared this to me on Twitter. They expect <laughs> me to talk about this, and I respect it. But I don't think we're seeing this anytime soon. Not to say this isn't happening, because last time, the last time we had the document of, and I wish I could go back and and, and grab it. I, I totally 
totally forgot. But um, they had a PlayStation exclusive that they were working on. Several projects in the works. One of them being PlayStation exclusive. Um, one of them being VR. And the one in VR was Deracine. The one PlayStation exclusive that they're working on probably is Bloodborne 2. But when are we going to see that? Probably no time soon. Because of the Elden Ring. Put another tally. So, yeah. Don't get your hopes up here. But Kyle... This is what I would want to see at PlayStation Experience. I mm-hmm. think about this at least once or twice a week. If I saw anything Bloodborne related, Tally, uh, I, I, my heart races because I'm just yeah. like, I would probably cry. I would probably yell. I'd probably get up out of my chair, probably do all those three things at the same exact time. Uh-huh. This is it. So yeah. what would be that thing for you? Because I know you feel oh. nothing when it comes to From Software, and you don't want me to be happy. So, Oh, <laughs> hold. Hold the phone. Don't yeah. be spreading that out there. I'm happy when you're happy. I'm happy when anyone gets what they want. Mm-hmm. Just like, you know, universe. Give a little something to me. Like, I, I'm just, that's all I'm saying. Well, what, what, is, what is your the, From... The last day... The le- the, honestly, Joe, yeah. honestly, yeah. I had a dream, okay. right? It was right there. Uh-huh. It was right there. And then the creator decided to say some really hurtful things about an entire group of people. Oh, Hogwarts and Legacy. Now, and now that game is dead to me. I gotcha. Uh, so that is a dream that has been just crushed in front of my eyes. Right, right. Um, but other than that, like I would love to just see the RPGs that I grew up loving come back in a big way. Like mm. I would love Star Ocean 2, either remade, remaster, whatever. Just put it out so we can play it. Um mm. I'm a simple man. That's all I really need in my life. Uh, I I mean, I did get the Final Fantasy VII remake, That's part one fair. at least. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the big one is Resi- Resistance, but I I think that dream is probably not going to happen. Mm. I, I've come to terms with mm. with, with I've, well, seeing like the the. I already forgot their studio name. Deviation Studio. Yeah. They're probably making a first-person shooter. You have Firewalk that's working on a first person assumingly a first-person shooter multiplayer game. I feel like maybe even Gorilla has the second team bringing back Killzone. Mm. Uh, I, I feel like they have the shooters there, and I don't think we'll get, like... I think they're going to have Insomniac do other things, like Spider-Man 2 and, and I think maybe, I, I, I don't I'm, know. I'm going to be very ballsy and say... 110 percent resistance is happening it's it's I happening wish, and it's gonna be a psvr game see that bumps me out but like what if it is because again resistance 3 had the cool aim controller gimmick sure what if it's something like that i mean we we both played that vr game with the light gun it was a bravo team yeah it was not good we played it with each other but this is insomniac and they're good at what they do fair Insomniac has VR teams. They partnered with Oculus in the past before they were mm. bought out by Sony. I'm telling you, I it's mean, happening. I, I, sure, but my my dream resistance is not in VR. But uh, what if this is like a Half Life Alex situation, Kyle? Where it's like, it. I don't think it will be. I, there, there's no characters that are like Nathan is. Nathan Hale is cool and whatnot, but like not the same level of Alex Vance. Uh, or sure. or any of the Half Life people, I feel like, or or even, um, oh God, Joseph, what's the Resistance Three guy's last name? Joseph something. I'm not gonna pretend um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like they're good. I feel like they're good characters, but not memorable. On the same obviously, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, listen, I'm not gonna. I'm I'm not giving hope or giving up the hope that quickly, Kyle. I I and SSX. SSX. Where's that at? Where's that at? EA. Mm. Mm. (laughs) Well, here's what Lethal has to say. Lethal (laughs) writes in, simple question today. You can only pick one, Elden Ring or Bloodborne 2. Don't tally those. Those don't count. I'm just reading the question here. I did not move my pen. It's just like me saying that word that shall not be said. I'm not Uh saying it because I'm just reading it off the list. That's how it works. Uh, So this question obviously is aimed towards me, Kyle. Yeah, but I, I have an answer it. though. Oh, good. What's your answer? Bloodborne two. Oh, really? Not Elder. It's Ring. it's it's Bloodborne two for the simple fact mm-hmm. 
because I want to see you get it. I want to see people who love Bloodborne right. get the sequel that they so badly want. That's that would be my answer. Nothing against Elden Ring. I think Elden Ring looks dope. Looks cool. It's just uh, Bloodborne's real cool. Like I, I, I can see it. I can appreciate it. All right. I, I, and I would love to see what that would look like on a PS5. Are you kidding me? I'm going to say something very oh, crazy man. right now. If I had the choice, Elden Ring or Bloodborne 2, and let me let me say this too for the record, because I that's an easy. I, there's no risk or reward in that situation. And you know me, Kyle. I made you kill Batman in front of Spider Man. Remember that? A- and Vita. And you Vita killed the Vita. <laughs> I'm a sick son of a bitch. Listen, pop. Pop Bloodborne 2 twice in the back of the head. This is why. Ooh. Okay? This is why I say we kill Bloodborne in order to let Elden Ring live. It's not because I don't love Bloodborne. It's literally my favorite game ever made. The reason why I'm saying we tell Bloodborne to look at the flowers, Lenny, is because the game's perfect. It doesn't need a sequel. It could end right there. Right? Sequels, oftentimes, you get let down. Look at our good friend Shaw Capri. Named his kid Ellie after Ellie from The Last of Us. Oh, Part don't. two comes around. Don't. He has wild expectations. They don't get met. And uh, Last of Us Part Two is a letdown for him. He named his kid after a letdown. That sucks. Is that true? Sean Sean was let down by Part Two? Yeah. He doesn't like it. Oh, I yeah. did not know that. Well, he also didn't beat God of War. So, you know, what type of taste does he really have? Let's be real. You know? <laughs> And two kids, woof. Bad decision after bad decision <laughs> after bad decision. So, yeah, I would let Bloodborne 2 die to let Elden Ring live because I've that trailer, as cool as it is, and trust me when I say, Kyle, we have 200, as of this podcast comes out, 210 days and two hours and 53 minutes and 40 seconds until the launch of Elden Ring. It's still I, a game that I, can't I don't. You're know. adding the seconds in now. Well, I was just reading the timer, <laughs> so, oh, okay. uh, so I was really thinking: should I, I add like, the yeah, seconds? Joe, is that overkill? But Joe's been uh, quick on his math lately. <laughs> He's doing really, real well. But yeah, that, that's why I don't know what Elden Ring is. So this is a new idea by George Railroad Martin. He's read it, wrote it years ago. Let's go. I want to see it. Um, sure. So yeah, that's that's it for sure. Mm-hmm. Question for you, yeah. Joe. Sure, because you, you're you're uh, obviously know more about from software than I do. Mm-hmm. Are they typically the studio that would have two big projects like this going at the same time? I know they have multiple studios. I don't do. know okay. how. Yeah, I don't know how it af- how the you know um, situation at hand has affected them. I know very mm-hmm. poorly it's affected them. So I, yeah. I think all hands are on deck for Elden Ring right now. I okay. think all teams are there. I think maybe pre 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 production is on, you know, the velvet veil. But sure. other than that, I don't know. What is is Elden Ring the Sekiro team? Uh, great question. Or I can't speak Dark with Souls authority. Team? I can't speak with authority on that. I'll look that yeah. up because I'm curious. That's something like a Jason Schur would have. No, yeah, because I know they had two separate teams. Even our good friend Sin Vendetta could write in because I know they did have two teams. I know one of them worked on Dark Souls 2. Not a lot of people liked Dark Souls 2 and then mm-hmm. plans quickly changed. But I do know that From Software is way bigger than we've thought that they previously were. So, yeah, with that, Kyle, I want to get to the next. The, the hype training ain't over. OK. It just no. ain't. We got it's more. Not. Yeah. Put it in my veins. Let's go. <laughs> James Carr over at GameSpot writes, EA Motive reported, reportedly reviving Dead Space. EA is reportedly reviving Dead Space with Motive Studio developing the game. As reported by Gamatsu, Motive is supposedly developing a reimagining of the original Dead Space games. And EA plans to reveal the game during e play, EA Play Live on July 22nd. The rumor originated from Games Beat's Jeff Grubb, who said on the Games Beat Decides podcast that Motive Studios is working on a dormant EA IP to be revealed at the presentation in July. 
After that, the story is picked up by VGC, and Eurogamer reported hearing similar rumors. According to Gamatsu, the Dead Space revival is being developed by Motive Studios, which previously made Star Wars Squadrons. EA Motive had previously been working on a project codenamed Gaia, but it was canceled after six years in development. The new Dead Space is set to be a reimagining of the story and not a direct sequel to the original trilogy. Yeah, this is something we knew. Like, I, I know like a lot of people are very excited about this, but if you just piece things together, they were obviously setting this up. So I knew I had faith because as long as you say it with gusto, you say it with confidence, those things will come. If you're confident and you're true of heart and you believe in good, and when I mean good, I mean like getting what you want, then yes, these things will happen. That's just <laughs> life advice for me. Okay? I... I well, I'm excited because I my newfound love for Resident Evil games. Mm-hmm. I, I do want to play more survival horror, and Dead Space is, in my opinion, right b- underneath Red Resident Evil for yeah. like the the go to franchises for me to play. I'm not a big, huge Silent Hill fan, um, but I I I feel bad for Visceral man. That's I feel I just to, yeah. I I feel so bad for them. Just you know. EA axing that team, what, two years ago now at this point? Yep. I feel like. Um, two, three. And then, like, they're all off doing their own cool things and whatnot. But, like, it would have been cool to see them take Dead Space into the this now current gen. Yeah. And, and do something really cool with it. Um, but that's cool. I, mm-hmm. I personally don't know if I'm. Well, you want to know why, why Dead Space failed? Well, I, I know it got a little too out of its core, right? Well, not just that. Three is an abomination that I didn't finish because it sure. wasn't even scary in the slightest. So the reason why Dead Space failed was EA had super unrealistic expectations of what this franchise could be. They honestly thought they had the next Resident Evil. So going into this game, they already planned comic books um ah, series like okay. um um like movies uh all these things and yeah. it wasn't that it's not to say that they it, it sucked or it sold bad it just sold soft and mm. none of the things attached did well at all so ea had these lofty expectations that this series just couldn't hit unfortunately that's yeah yeah, so for me, I, uh-huh. I'm f- there with you because I'm like, I would love. Actually, let's get into this question because I think it rolls yeah. into it. Awesome Dave writes in, as much as I want Dead Space reboot or remastered uh, series, should we be worried that if too many of these types of collections are successful, will these just be lackluster cash grabs eventually? Is there a hope or des- a desire for nostalgia going into uh, or going to lead to disappointment in the long term. So I, yeah, I'm not worried about this in the slightest. So the reason why you could, you, you can really line things up and see where this was eventually headed was when you take a look at what EA has been doing over the past few years, they have been just rebooting and kind of going back uh, or not rebooting. Sorry. They've been going back and remastering things um, like Burnout and, for example, Mass Effect to critical and commercial success. So they want to go back and see what works because they're going back to the well of single player. Uh, remember when they said, oh, multiplayer is dead? Well, it, <laughs> Star Wars was they, such a huge success. that they, Yeah, go for it, Kyle. Yeah, they also said like they have no interest in remasters or remakes yeah. either. So they've totally gone back on the word. Yeah. I'm not worried about collection like if collections are successful will we just get you know these things that aren't as good those are going to come regardless like i mean they already are yeah i mean you look at that mario 3d all-stars thing on switch that is pretty much just like the old games put on a cart and here you go and sold so yeah yeah to me i I don't think i think those were going to happen either way I think remastering and collections are a great way to reinvigorate a fan base and to see if that fan base exists. Um, Absolutely. 
That's how you see it. So yeah, you're going to get for every Kingdoms of Amalur remaster, you're going to get a massive uh, Mass Effect collection. And again, yeah. as long as they're handled with care, that's the important thing. But Famous Seamus also points out with this question, uh, how, and this is the most famous Seamus I've ever met and you've ever met, listener. Just letting you know that. Put a tally for that one. Uh, how many of you would be, I'm sorry, how happy would you be if Dead Space and Bloodborne were revived but have no involvement of any kind with the original developers? So this is going back to what we were talking about. This is EA Motive. This isn't Visceral, unfortunately. Right? Mm-hmm. Visceral, you know, if y'all don't know, canceled Star Wars game. That studio then was closed down in favor of Respawn. That was the Amy Henning written correct. one, correct? Yeah, that's why it hurts so bad for us. Yeah. Um, that said, how would I feel if the, none of the original developers, well, we know that one of the original, uh, developers f- are founded the Callisto project and yeah. are making the Callisto protocol, which has me so hyped, so incredibly hyped. Cause you like, you can see that's a love letter and a spiritual Absolutely. successor to, uh, dead space. So I'm, I'm excited for the original developers. Seems like they're doing what they want. Motive now gets attached to an IP that they do have something to prove. So with Dead Space being revived, but without the original developers, this is kind of like a blue point situation. As long as they have the people in place that understand the essence of Dead Space, then they're good. I'm not worried. In fact, I'm excited. Um, That's how I feel about it, Kyle. What say you? It is exciting. Okay. I'm one. I, I I don't. My hesitation should not be seen as me not being excited about it because yeah. I think it. I think it's cool. My hesitation is. I don't know if I'm one hundred hundred percent sure it's EA Motive doing Dead Space. I feel like Motive is more. I mean, they only have like two projects. They worked on Battlefront Two and and Squadrons. But the when vehicle it comes portions to squad, of those, by the way. The ve- exactly. The vehicle stuff. A lot of movement. Mm-hmm. I think of another dormant EA IP, and that's SSX. Hmm. I, 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 I'm, that's where I feel like I don't know how EA Motive, who yeah has worked on movement pretty extensively and almost solely, how they're going to do that and put it into like a survival horror way for dead space uh i i mean i'm sure they can do it anyone that creates a game is super talented Mm -hmm. but i i don't know i just some of me part of me thinks that it might be dead space might be coming back but maybe not by motive i'm curious and i i haven't looked up this whatsoever i no, i think dead space was a unreal engine game if i'm not mistaken i can look it up yeah uh but with Motive's experience with Frostbite, maybe this is their way of putting the Frostbite engine into the Dead Space universe. And I think that's what EA really cares about the most. I think EA really wants to sell Frostbite to other developers. And I think this is the way to do it. By doing games that aren't just motion, that they're going to need to learn and code different uh, things to broaden that engine out. So I think they can really, I think they could do well here. Um, uh, fun fact. Yeah. Uh, this is an article from uh, PC Gamer. Okay. Back in 2019, uh, Dead Space was built from the bones of Tiger Woods PGA Tour. It's a Tiger Woods wow. engine that it was built on. <laughs> wow. So I take back any worry of motive not knowing how to do survival <laughs> horror. Uh, Cause Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I think, I think it could work with the bones of frostbite to make this thing work. So I'm, I'm excited. I don't think you need the original development team to have this game. Just like with the, you know, resident, uh, resident evil two remake, right? Doubt that's a 100% the original team working on that. And it's just immaculate. So sure. to me, Kyle, I'm super excited. I'm ready for Dead Space. I'm ready to get terrified again. Because for y'all that don't know, as much as I love Resident Evil, this is the series for me. This is the series that got me into survival horror. It's it's this. So 
honestly, if Motive is the team that's going to remaster, remake stuff, what? who knows, Kyle, if this is successful, maybe you get your SSX game. Man, that'd be incredible. Is Do you think this is a uh, this a Halloween spooky time year or a next year thing? Or even further? Uh, dude, give me Halloween spooky time. Yeah. I mean, probably next year, but... The yeah. Squadrons was, what, 2019? No, tw- uh, 2020, 2020. It was 2020. Okay. It's not to say that it would intersect with Battlefield, but just just put that away from Halloween. You don't need to have it there to be yeah. successful or anything. So sure. I would actually say that maybe Dead Space Remake is quarter one of next year. I can see that. Yeah. I'm Do pumped. you take that... Uh... RE2 was that not in February or March? That was the year it came out. February. Yeah. I and I think RE7 was also February. Uh, RE Yeah, RE7 was January. January. And RE3 remake was March. Yeah, so or, no, horror like does really of April. Yeah. They they do pretty well earlier in the year in the first yeah. quarter, so that 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 one could work. Yeah. And again, like you give me Dead Space, you give me Bloodborne two tallies right there kyle i am this is great this is what i wanted and again yeah it sucks because visceral was seemingly to us outside looking in just taken away from us but even like when i take a look at where ea is right now with respawn and what we got with fallen order like they're in a i i feel like nobody wants to give ea any credit because it's just so easy to kick them in the gut but, like, they're in a really good space right now. And when I mean good space, I mean, like, when you take a look at Respawn, that's their golden goose that seemingly can do no wrong. Um, and they have something to prove with Battlefield 2042. And I feel like there is wind behind the sails of that game. While at the same exact time, when you take a look at BioWare, they need that win. There's been some yeah. changes in in that company structure as well, where like they have this remaster. Everybody loves it. Kind of gives you the you know romanticize those feelings of of Bioware. But like they have the most to prove. So not to say they're in a great space, but they're in a they're in the underdog space. And I feel like that's where we want them to be because they're going to out. They're going to go out there and test the waters to say, hey. Do you guys really want that space? Because we'll put out this remaster, see if you like it, and who knows? We'll probably do it. You know. I I, I hope you're right, but mm-hmm. it, it also is still EA, and I read what they're doing with Madden, and it still doesn't seem like enough. My so. idea? It is what it is. I guess. Twenty twenty two. It just it just bad. laughing in our faces. I I can't wait for the the year where. Like 2K can go back and make an NFL game mm-hmm. or a different because right. boy, sports Madden is not great. Sports. Hey, I put 200 hours in that will be the show this year, everybody. Jesus, Kyle, it came out hours. in April. Listen, man, right. <laughs> I discovered the joy of kicking people's ass online. There so you yeah. there you go. It's fun. You know what's not fun, Kyle? What? PlayStation exclusives and being on the PC space. <laughs> oh my god. Calm down. <laughs> Your head was going to explode. For Sorry, you get passionate. <laughs> <laughs> now, this comes from Andy Robinson over at VGC. Ghost of Tsushima's new box removes only on PlayStation, sparking PC speculation. The new box art can be found on Amazon and PlayStation Direct with the exclusivity callout removed, while the old ver- version can still be viewed on this product page. Sony previously removed the only on PlayStation notice for PS4 games Days Gone and Horizon Zero Dawn, as both games were among its first titles ported to PC, which could potentially indicate that Tsushima could be next in line. However, Sony hasn't been using the only on PlayStation label for PS4 titles that have PS5 versions either, such as Spider-Man Miles Morales and Sackboy A Big Adventure, so it could just as well indicate some sort of full PS5 version. There is evidence that Sony has been moving away from the only on PlayStation label for its newest titles, however. 
From PlayStation 5 exclusives, Sony appears to have dropped the exclusivity, exclusivity branding completely, with titles such as Demon's Souls and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart not carrying the signage. But many of its biggest PS4 games, such as The Last of Us Part II, still carry the label. Uncharted 4, which was recently confirmed to, re- to be receiving its own PS4, Oh my god! Its own PC port also hasn't had its box updated on the Amazon nor PlayStation Direct. Also, very much apologize if you heard any like apparently another drag race down my street. Oh jeez! And I just like I just fooled around with this mic to make sure that like no outside <laughs> noises intervene or whatever, uh-huh. and that was the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. So my apologies. That said, next time we we need to stop the show and you need to go out there with a mic or your phone and ask them a question what they think about on the go to PlayStation. <laughs> hey. Hello, excuse me, uh, and you're gone. <laughs> hey, over here, uh, V. Elden Ring or Bloodborne too. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a gun. V Pelosi writes in about Ghost of Tsushima on PC. I would like to extend the discussion I had with Lethal on Discord, which you should be a part of Discord audience. It's great. Uh, to you, the podcast, my podcast friends. Apparently, Sony is making a move to make PlayStation 4 exclusives available on PC. It makes sense in terms of marketing as people will gradually buy a PlayStation 5 and will no longer buy a PlayStation 4 game to buy or, or to buy PS5 games, even if it's backwards compatible uh, or even if it has backwards compatibility. However, in this quote unquote war between Sony and Microsoft, Sony's main weapons against Xbox Game Pass are as exclusives in the long run. Do you think that this extra money, quote unquote, that is coming with the availability of Horizon Zero Dawn and Days Gone, now possibility of Ghosts and even Bloodborne, could end up hurting Sony in this battle for market market dominance in games? After all, if I'm eventually going to be able to play exclusives without PlayStation, why have a PlayStation? P.S. I'm not saying that I think exclusives shouldn't be present on PC. I'm just wondering if it makes sense on the market. I think it 110 totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. First off, I want to give credit to this article because I saw the new cover, quote unquote, and I was just like, oh, cool. Like this, it has a deep sale on Amazon. Everybody go buy it. Everybody's like, but look at, look at the top right. I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> I never yeah, looked. No. <laughs> so those cyber sleuths really did a great job because I could not yeah. even tell you. That said, like the finest details, I can't, I can't capture that. Um, no, I think what's the point of owning a PlayStation? The point of owning a PlayStation is to play the PlayStation exclusives and be in that ecosystem. Right. But for PC folks and the PC market is growing. A lot of people, you know, don't realize this PC market slowly growing consoles are more stagnant. So you're seeing this growing market. You want to throw your games over there, especially in places like, and I think Pelosi, you're in Brazil, especially in markets like Brazil or China where, or Russia or wherever that the PC market is more dominant in because of like either like taxes in, in Brazil are astronomical for consoles or whether you're in China, it again, um, the China, China's regulatory um, overrulings or whatever. It's just, it's, it's too powerful over there. Right. Um, So you want to just skip the BS, throw those things on, on, on PC. So I, I think no, in the, we have to also drop the war thing, right? Xbox, PlayStation, there's two companies doing their own separate things at this point. Mm-hmm. I don't think m- making your game eventually on PC matters much right now. There will be a day where Last of Us 4, <laughs> whatever, is day and day on PlayStation and PC or the cloud. But right now... It's years out, and I think they're just trying to wean you into it. I don't know. What say you, Kyle? I, I think the key word you said there was eventually. So mm-hmm. if you are okay waiting two, three years after this game has already been out on PlayStation to play it and buy it on your PC, mm-hmm. then that's your prerogative. And 
I'm happy that you are able to to do that on your gaming platform of choice. For a lot of people, myself included, I will not be able to wait the the years to play a PlayStation exclusives on a PC. Right. So the fact that I can play day one on my system is is the way I I want to do it. And the fact that I don't think it's going to to hurt the market at all because in the example of Ghost, if Ghost is coming to PC, um, also did not even realize a, P- a PS5 version is a possibility, and that excites me. Well, greatly. it's a it's a up it's an update. Yeah, yeah, they did it. Yeah, weeks ago. sure. Oh, yeah, Duh. not weeks uh, ago. They did whatever. back in October. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the oh man, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, but like with Ghost, it's already sold millions and millions of copies. Right. So the fact that it has the potential to sell even more to another audience is totally fine, especially yeah. because it is a game of the year contender of last year. Sure. Um, Joe texts me all the time. It should be game of the year. <laughs> it got fucking robbed, Kyle. I don't know about robbed. It got straight up robbed. I don't know about Did robbed. You, I, I, it was I, a strong <laughs> year last year, Joe. Yeah, very strong. But I think Ghost is just, it's great. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm not debating that. It I, is fantastic. I think I, I said this on Twitter, and I'll state it here for a fact: Ghost of Tsushima, after Last of Us, best opener in a video game. That's a fa- that's his fact. We can Hopefully argue semantics, but like I watched because there's a reaction that's going semi viral right now. Guy yeah, I, I saw the, it. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. And I was just like, oh wow, I feel something. And so I went on YouTube just to watch reaction videos and people just losing their mind in in the beginning. I'm just like, yeah, I feel legit, something again. This is great. I feel alive. <laughs> everyone listening, legit, one of my favorite things to do when I don't know what to do with myself during mm-hmm. the, my day or night, I just watch people react to things that make them happy. Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah. Gives me that little dopamine rush. Yeah, so absolutely. like for me, like that guy, he played it on, on PlayStation eventually. I know. That there are some some people I I saw a tweet from someone who plays primarily on PC or Xbox, and they're just like after playing after playing Days Gone and Horizon, I want more PlayStation games on PC. Yeah. That's the market we're targeting. People that play on PlayStation love your Dual Sense like we do. You're gonna stay here because it's about the convenience factor. It's not about the modular state that that PCs are, you know, customizing it, fine tuning it. This is this is what consoles do, and PCs are a separate market. And I don't think us console folk really can wrap our head around. Well, you're giving people an option to play it off the ecosystem. Does that mean people are going to jump ship in droves to play it on PC? No, some may, but the majority won't. Um, you, you know, we we see it with Xbox as well. Like every time, like Sea of Thieves, 23 plus million concurrent like players, something crazy. Most of those people on PC, mm-hmm. you know, there is growth here. There's communities that could grow from here. So I don't think this is bad. I think the main weapon against Xbox Game Pass that PlayStation's going to need to do is PS Now. And that needs to come sooner rather than later. Because yeah. the, the idea here is, listen... I can go, I can, I can go watch the theater, right? Any day I want. The theater. Right? I could go watch Hamilton. But damn, I got Netflix in front of me and it's given me thousands of options. And now all of a sudden there's a, there's a dating show of people with animal faces. What's I going can't on? wait to watch. <laughs> you are part of watch. the problem, Kyle. And that's the thing. That's what <laughs> Xbox Game Pass is. Where PlayStation is like, this is this one game and it's an event for a month. Game Pass, look at what Microsoft's mission is. Every quarter, have one big, triple, quadruple-A game. And it's going to start coming. And PlayStation's going to need to answer that with an equivalent to. Not to say put all PlayStation games day and date, but they need to make a service that people actually care about. That's Mm -hmm. more than PlayStation Now. So that's what I think their biggest weapon could be. Right now, I think exclusives help satiate it. But I don't think, you know... A game two, three, four, five years ago being on PC is going to hurt anybody. That's just me. Captain Logan, Mm -hmm. um, patron in front of the show, writes, If Ghost comes to PC, do you think they'll have crossplay enabled for multiplayer? 
So will Sony have to pay themselves for lost revenue? <laughs> Logan, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a gun. They'll be just fine, Logan. They'll be just fine. <laughs> Kyle, let's get to the last story. Right, well, hold on. Are day. you telling me, Joe, Yeah. that you don't want to watch somebody dressed like a dolphin go on a date with someone dressed as like a giraffe? No, and man. You can fall in love for their personalities? No. No, I don't want any of that. <laughs> All right. It's fair. Nothing. Whatever. Oh, how Oh, how did you meet your husband? Oh, well, he was dressed as an <laughs> elephant. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh where did you meet oh. Catherine? Oh, Catherine, well, you know, we were on this show. Oh, my God, yeah. Uh. She was dressed as an antelope. What? And we just really, what, 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 I'm sorry, what was that? Yeah, no, we just really hit it off. No, 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 the last thing. Oh, yeah, her favorite color is green. No, 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 no. Antelope? Yeah, you know, anteater? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's called Sexy Beast, by the way, on Netflix. Go ahead and. Uh, wow, is that the name check of it? That out. It certainly is. Ooh, wow. You know what? You but go, I, I, you oh, go on another site, you're going to get the same exact thing, if you know what <laughs> I mean. Just letting you know. I hope they do like a uh, not for prior experience. I just have a if, very if educated anybody, guest. <laughs> if anybody uh-huh. actually hits it off on that show, sure. I so badly, Joe, mm-hmm. want video of them telling people how they fell in love. Yeah, and I want it to be just that. Like, yeah, she was just as like a zebra. And her favorite color is blue, whatever. Like, man, that'd be stuck. Listen, I'm not going to kink shame you. If you want to yeah. dress as Pepe Le Pew and fall in love, go for it. It's going to be great. Austin Wood. We have very, just sorry, one sec. We have very, defi- di- very differing definitions of great, Kyle. <laughs> we need to address that. Did show. I say great or did I say good? <laughs> no, you said great. All right, I'll take that back. Like I Tony the Tiger. <laughs> great. I meant good. <laughs> also, went over at Games Radar writes, Abandoned developer Blue Box to hold Q&A to dispel Silent Hill and Hideo Kojima rumors. Blue Box Game Studios is not working on a Silent Hill game or anything connected to Hideo Kojima. Studio head Hassan Karaman affirmed in a new statement, quote, I just wanted to do a really quick video to show myself that I'm a real person, Karaman said in a short video. I'm not really associated with Hideo Kojima. I'm not an actor. I'm not working on Silent Hill, end quote. Karaman's statement came on the heels of another tweet from Blue Box, again stressing that the, quote, confusion and rumors, end quote, surrounding its upcoming game abandoned are pure fiction. Quote, we are a small indie studio with actual real people, the studio said. We wanted to do a live stream with a Q&A where you can ask all your questions to clarify confusion and rumors. We just want to set expectations, end quote. The studio said as much in a separate statement issued last week, which it published following a now-deleted tweet teasing that the final name for our abandon would start with an S and end with an L. This was perceived by many as a cheeky allusion to Silent Hill, which Kojima was originally set to revive on the back of the teaser PT before splitting from Konami, at which some fans have speculated is somehow related to Blue Box. However, as Caraman and Blue Box have now repeatedly stressed, this is not the case. Blue Box said on June 15th, quote, We have no relations with Konami. Silent Hill is owned by Konami. We do not have any relations with Hideo Kojima. It was never our intention to tease the name as Silent Hill. We sincerely apologize for this, end quote. This web of theories was conveniently gathered in this Reddit post, which delves into everything from who follows who in social media, to arbitrary connections between colors and shapes and logos and trailers, to trademark archives. The so-called, quote, blue box conspiracy, end quote, has also received its own dedicated subreddit, which has since enacted strict moderation policies to combat and prevent bullying and witch hunts in the wake of this roller coaster of revelations. Kojima's history of putting on elaborate charades to conceal and announce projects, including the creation of fake studios and hiring actors for promotional material, added yet more fuel to the fire and made the whole scheme seem plausible if you could get your tinfoil hat tight enough. Kyle, a lot of people, a lot of people coming out there, put the yarn ready connecting dots. Right. Oh, yeah. I kept on texting you going like there are things that this this. (laughs) This Twitter handle 
the, this this studio are saying that is purposely leading people in certain directions. Like they're playing along with this. Um, yeah. Cypher Primus writes in, what do you guys think of this whole uh, Blue Box Studios controversy? Do you think Kojima is behind all of this or some small studio using what I call Kojima-like tactics to build interest in their game? My guess is that Kojima is behind it all. I mean, he loves messing with people's mind in this same way. Remember Phantom Pain? And that's one of the biggest uh, like links here. Is like, yeah, they say a lot of things, but like the social media handle is like, they're like, people are like, prove that you're not Kojima. If you're not Kojima, because we've nobody's met this guy, Hassan. Nobody's seen his face up until that video is like, uh-huh. okay, then prove it. And I mean... Honestly, go for it. Kyle. I've I'm not in on this co- uh, controversy at all. Like, either way, it looks cool. Yeah. But having Cipher right in his question and me looking as you're reading it, and him typing the words "blue box" as BB Studios, BB. I'm like, wait, Death Stranding had BB. Right. His BB. Oh my god! Just another little, just like a yeah. firework went off in my head. I'm like, oh my god. And you're connecting dots, right? <laughs> yeah, the dots start filling in, and the, the picture is, is People coming say because Norman Reedus was in a box. Um, sure. And he was wearing a blue suit. That that means mm. this is a thing. There's something about, like, the flag on the back of, of Sam's outfit as well, right? It's like yeah. a Dutch uh, flag. Something like that. And the studio is apparently in the, in the Netherlands, I think. Right. No, well, yeah, they're in Denmark. I think the studios Denmark. in the Netherlands, we're dumb Americans. We think that's the same place. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. okay. They said, and, and this is this is one of the tweets I want to read out here. Um, Blue Box Studios goes, we want to answer some rumors for the last time. We are a small indie studio with actual real people working on a, pa- working on a passion passionate game we want to do a live stream with a q a where you ask questions to clarify every confusion and rumors we just want to set expectations and the comment right under going hey blue box um if you would like to stop the rumors forever could hassan just simply reply to this message saying hi this is uh, you know this is me hassan you know this is not hideo kojima please look forward to abandon uh and blue box studios replies Hi, uh, person who's tweeting this. I'm Hassan. <laughs> I am, as you can see, not Hideo Kojima. And that was the other thing. This is like, this guy was toying with people until I think, honestly, Sony poked them and goes, knock it off, put put a video out there. Um, because, yeah, their their Twitter, their, their Twitter was playing around with this. Mm-hmm. Or they were just had no publicist telling them what to do whatsoever. Because this is, I understand people's confusion because this is PlayStation giving a studio that has never worked on a game previously or released a game previously. They've partnered with them. They're giving them permission to use this app. We don't know what it is. This could be the PlayStation experience app. Like we, we talked yeah, about that. That was my theory where where I mentioned earlier, the, the PSX being an app based thing. What if the app that they are teasing for this abandoned trailer that keeps getting pushed back is the PlayStation Experience app because it's going to be in the next, the the summer showcase. Right. And they're just not ready for it to be to launch or they're not ready to talk about the show yet. And that's why yeah. that date keeps pushing back for the trailer for whatever abandoned is. Exactly. So when I see this first it's not Kojima. The reason why it's not Kojima is you don't... It, one of the biggest things, one of the canaries in the coal mine, nobody, nor Jeff Grubb, Jeff Grubb's like, uh he's the guy that leaks all the stuff. He's like, this is not Kojima. We got um, Jeff Keighley going, this is not Kojima. We got people saying like, yeah, this is this is a weird Kojima-esque thing, but we can assure you it's not him. And we, you don't see a IGN or GameSpot really covering this from what I've seen. So, no, this is not Kojima. We understand the Moby Dick Studios connection. We understand the Norman Reedus and a fetus uh, in a box. Get it. But we're drawing parallels where there are none because I think they, whoever's handling that social media of that team is doing a very poor job or they're doing a really excellent job. 
Because I saw one person like, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. You know, this guy came on video and he was crying that this wasn't him. And I, shame on you guys. And I'm here to tell you, I love you devs. Guys, gals, everybody there. Y'all do great work. Y'all do amazing things. I love you. Champion you. But not this time. Because here's the thing. That guy wasn't crying in his video. It's like 3 o'clock in Denmark, right? He's tired. He's getting all these questions. He probably got a call from... Big Daddy PlayStation going, hey, we gave you a lot of money. You need to clarify this right now because a lot of people are going to be real bummed out. And he went out there and clarified. What is there to be sad about? You gained 30,000 Twitter followers. A half a million people watched that, you know, Hassan's video. You're a small indie team. If this is exactly what you th what it is in a small indie studio, you have gotten, at this point, millions of people on your product. And sure, what if 90% don't buy the game? Probably the case. You still have thousands of thousands of people interested in this product or at least know about it. That's like 100% of the work of what PR usually does. It's like get people to look at your thing. So, yeah, no, he's this studio, as long as they make a decent game, trust me, they're fine. They're following. This is great. Now, do I believe everything Hassan has said? Absolutely not. Because I don't think, and here's where I say something, Kyle, with confidence, with gusto, and with no like insider source whatever here. But I'm going to say it, and I'm going to make it real. You ready? This is not Kojima. This is Bloober Team. Bloober Team back in February teased uh, that they were working on another horror game with a popular publisher. This comes from the CEO of Bloober Team. Uh, in, in this article is from bloodydisgusting.com. Ew. They say, in fact, we've been working on more than one uh, IP a year. And we're working on another gaming project. Another horror IP. And we're doing this with a very famous game pu gaming publisher. I can't tell you who. I can't tell you what the project is, but I'm pretty sure when people realize what we're working on, they'll be very excited. We also had, um, I believe, the artist that works on Silent Hill saying, yeah, we're going to, they have something. So this is Bloober Team. I think that this secondary team is a secondary Bloober Team. I think the logo of Blue Box Studios um, is probably a play on words of Bloober Team of some sort, but even like that logo looks fake as all hell. So I think this is a Blue Team game, Kyle. I don't know. What say you? I I don't think it's Bloober. Okay. Um, I do think at the end of the day, this is a small indie team, like they say it is. Mm -hmm. And they are... They just got too big for their britches, as my grand, grandparents used to say, where... Mm -hmm. They they caught the, the genius for doing it. Sure. They like you said got a lot of eyes on it. Mm -hmm. um, but like just here, I I found uh, a Steam page for Blue Box Game Studios. Mm -hmm. They released a uh, a demo in December twenty third of last year called The Haunting, and it's a first person horror adventure game where you use a camera to fight ghosts, and it's the same Blue Box logo. So I I think it's. I think they're a real indie team. Okay. I, 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 I think what they're making is going to be cool or whatnot. I just think they got a little too ahead of them. I think Bloober is still probably, they're, they're working on some, but they're not connected. Yeah. 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 When people are like, oh, the death threats this man have gotten. I'm like, okay, first off, I've gotten a death threat over my opinion on Labo. Let's like, <laughs> nobody's claimed it. You're assuming. Let's, let's knock it off with the assumptions here. Um, honestly for people like oh, I feel bad for this man I'm like I feel as bad as not nothing like I feel nothing and maybe that makes me a cold-blooded serial killer but like I just take a look at the math going this guy's got a lot of his eyes on his project the only thing he needs to do is deliver on it because mm -hmm. people are going to be mad each no matter what people are going to be upset it's the internet <laughs> come on you know there's people upset about anything so, no, I, I don't think this is Kojima. I think Kojima, I mean, it's the worst kept rumor at this point. He's working with Xbox on something. His yeah. last project got canned because he was it was a Stadia game. 
Kojima wants to work on the clouds. He wants to be in the cloud. So <laughs> this is that's that's Kojima's project. Whatever this project is, is either a small indie game or it's Blooper Team. Sure. Bam. Gusto confidence. That's what that's that's what's gonna send me home. The winner. I'll place a bet right here, right now. If it is, though, Joe, uh-huh. is this the one of the best cloak and dagger things, like smoke and mirrors thing in games, where they're they're doing a good enough job to make make us doubt it, but not. And that's not the other fully? thing. I at this point. I think this guy is so, it seems like he's so inexperienced with this whole PR thing that you could be right. This could be just an indie thing because the Moby Dick Studios, like there's a guy with bandages on his face. It's like he was on some type of dating show, right? (laughs) But (laughs) like you knew it was fake and everybody was like, okay, you could just, you could just tell us now where we're getting Mm -hmm. to the point of, um, for sake of better words, climax to what this should be that, we still haven't gotten anything. So chances are this is real. This is a small indie team and he got too big for his britches and he really ought to hire a PR person. And Hey, guess what? I'm a PR person. I got gotcha. Throw some assets my way. I'm, I'll help you. I'll, I'll help you in the Netherlands. You know, I, I charge I, great. I also, I just, uh, when searching through them, uh, about five hours ago, they put up a message from a new R, one of the outsourcing studios, and someone talking about it. Um, also, interesting enough, new R studio also worked on Death Stranding. So, the the links <laughs> don't go away. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Here's the thing. <laughs> they don't stop they just, they <laughs> one step forward to try to squash it but then oh, not, God. not good enough i don't think <laughs> <laughs> what if this guy is just like the biggest kojima stan in the world that's what people are like dude he's taking so many cues that's why i'm like dude like you know game respects game <laughs> right god bless god bless that's it kyle listen i got a question for you and we've been asking it a couple, you know, for a couple weeks now. Are you holding on to something? Water. Prepare the drop. Here are the latest steals, deals, and games coming out this week. Numero uno. Dark Alliance. D&D Dark Alliance. On PlayStation 5 and PS4. Uh, but, spoiler alert, you may want to avoid it. Anyway, <clears throat> Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, the official video game for PlayStation 4. Play that game because the Olympics probably won't be happening this year. Hey, you could be Sonic. Oh, God, that was right. (laughs) (laughs) May God have mercy on all our souls. Alex Kidd in Miracle World DX (laughs) on PS5. Legend of Mana. On PlayStation 4. The Eternal Castle Remastered. On PS5 and PS4. Scarlet Nexus. On PlayStation 5 and PS4. June 25th. Kyle, out of all these games, which are you the most excited for? Oh, man. I don't know. Really? I thought Legend of Mana because you're a weeb, right? That's a weeb game. (laughs) I've never played it. Okay. Um, Here's your chance. I, I kind of always wanted to, but I just I'm not in the mood for that kind of role playing game. I feel currently. Like it. Um, I I genu- genuinely am excited for Dark Alliance because I love Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Um, I just don't know if that is a day one buy. I think that might be a super sale kind of thing. That might be a like, yeah, like 10 bucks down the line. I mean, let me take a look at the reviews for it. Cause, um, I saw one from skilled up. I love skilled up by the way. Uh, he's my favorite YouTuber. If people are like, Joe, who's your favorite YouTuber? Who's someone you look up to skilled up? I'd love to have him on the show, but a, he's too big. He'll never notice us. And B, he's from Australia, so I'd have to wake up like 6 a.m. for that show. Impossible. Dark Alliance. <laughs> I did that once. Dark Alliance. I podcasted with the Australians. I mean, same. And that's why I'll, like, I'm like, I'll never do it again. Because it's just, <laughs> first off, they're too attractive. You're distracted. And then secondly, oh, yeah. it's like, 
It's 6 a.m. Okay. Dark Alliance right now, Metacritic is at a 58. So. All right. Oof. And God is is a geek. Rated it a 7. They usually give anything with a pulse at 100. So maybe this is something <laughs> you steer clear from. I'm fucking. I'm sorry. I cursed too much on the show. My apologies are Earthy Cheese's mom. I am pumped for Scarlet Nexus. On PS5 and PS4, the haptic triggers, Kyle, that's or, or the adaptive triggers, absolutely amazing. I am not into the JRPG stuff. Y'all know this. I really want this game to be it for me. So I will be buying this on Friday, and I will be streaming this on Friday if all goes well. So, Ooh. yeah, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. That says one bit of flash news before we get onto the Sony Pony Express. I have oh, another sorry. flash news thing to add that I should have added. Oh, previously. go for it. Say it right now. This flash news. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Final Fantasy IX is getting an animated series. And that is super exciting because Final Fantasy IX is one of, if not the best Final Fantasy. Oh. Um, it's, it's really well beloved. The characters are just freaking fantastic. Okay. Um, and I can't wait to see what the animated show is going to be like um yeah ff9 is underrated i think it's rated exactly where it needs to be because people love that game oh good Um, right behind right behind the seven remake that we're getting Mm -hmm. i would love an eight remake Mm -hmm. but i think nine is next i would love to see nine in in the seven remake kind of style because if you don't know joe nine is like medieval final fantasy Ooh. with like castles and airships and okay. you play as zidane who has a tail and uh da- you have a, the princess dagger uh, who's great and vivi who is a black mage and goes through some really dark stuff oh shit this is the thing um, with the top hat yeah <laughs> it's the jawa with the top smack hat about vivi vivi is yeah. the man i yeah. love that character. i always thought it was a jawa yeah, f- like, that's fair. That is totally fair. One uh-huh. of my favorite episodes of The Mandalorian is when he's disintegrating those little sons of guns. <laughs> so good. Man, that yeah, shows I- magic. Yeah, I can't wait for this. I don't know when it's coming out yet. I need to watch The Mandalorian but... again, I think. Yeah, I think so. Well, I'm happy for you, Kyle. How about that? Yeah. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Here's an official tweet from PlayStation that happened just two days ago. Cyberpunk 2077 is now available on the PlayStation Store. Work on the PS4 version continues with fixes and updates to be released throughout the year. For the best experience on PlayStation, playing on PlayStation 4 Pro or PS5 consoles is recommended. They also then say that Cyberpunk 2077 will have a next-gen, you know, for free upgrade uh, on PS5 in the second half of this year. I think that's not coming. I think that's way later. Yeah. That said, Kyle, um, as I think you don't need to say it, I don't need to say it. Don't buy this game yet still. No, you, <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait till the next gen thing is out. Yes. This is... I can't. I honestly, I, I know probably a lot of people are not with me on this one. I'm genuinely excited to play this game. Fire. I Fire. still want to experience it because I, I dig the world that it was set up to be. Yeah. Whether it lives up to that expectation or it's just mediocre, I want to see what Keanu Reeves did with this game. I want to see Johnny Silverhand. Yeah. Um, does this? I, I also like know CD Projekt is going through it right now. True. Like that data breach thing has been worse than what they feared, and i i i feel for them on that front also like what does this mean for the witcher 3 next gen port that's actually way the one i'm way more excited for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i just who knows when we get them fair yeah i feel like if you're one of those devs on that team you're smoking three packs a day <laughs> like you are it's rough and it's just and it's not even you're doing it's the higher ups yeah in that mm-hmm. Listen, Kyle, it's time for the Sony Pony Express. Yeehaw! Yeah, ruin tootin'. Pew, pew, pew. The famous Seamus Rotson. Let's hear. Listen, we all know that the Sony Pony Express is the fastest way to get your questions read on this show. All right? And you can send them in via the Casa de uh, Trophy Room Discord server. You could send them in via tweeting us at PS Trophy Room on Twitter. 
Or you can even email us the old fashioned way. Oh my goodness. Famous uh, Seamus writes in the most would, famous Seamus the, I've ever met in my whole entire life. Yeah. Wouldn't the Discord name be Casa de Trophy? That's better. That's better. This is the, this is the part of the show. Here's the thing. Show notes wise, Kyle knows this. Show doesn't know this. This is where I'm winging it. The first half of this, <laughs> you know, like I have notes no, for everything. And, uh, and you and say is... Casa de Trophy Room for weeks now. Yeah. It just for some reason I was like, wait, wouldn't it just be like the Trophy House? That's true. No, Casa de Trophy makes a lot more sense. White guy correcting a Hispanic. You've seen it here, folks. <laughs> So today, oh no, I white explained. <laughs> you white explained oh no. to me. Oh yeah, no, Jesus. I feel icky. I need to um, take I a shower. I think it's called Morongos or Moringa <laughs> salsa. You know? I've had a Tostitos. Uh, no, I think you're uh, actually right. Uh, Kyle. I'm shitting on you. Don't worry about it. So today, Sega is having a Sonic Symphony, which will be live streamed. We have many game series get their own live concerts. Zelda, Persona. Kingdom Hearts. My question is, if you could choose any PlayStation exclusive game slash series to get their own live concert, what would you choose? I'll answer that question with a question. How the hell did Ghost of Tsushima did not win any like music stuff? Did they not win any music stuff? Because honestly, I listen to that soundtrack uh, weekly. I wouldn't say daily. I'd be a Mm. fake fan. Hashtag fake fan. But like I listen to that when I'm even working out, it just gets me pumped. Now look at me; it doesn't happen often, but when I do, <laughs> I'm listening to you know. I I was... think last year music wise was stacked. Yeah, last year had some incredible music. Absolutely, in games. Um, mine went very quickly to a series. Go for it. Um, that openly makes me feel emotions just hearing a single chord. And mm-hmm. that's The Last of Us. I would love to sit in a, oh, I almost said an orchestra room, <laughs> a, a theater, and oh. just be, uh, just sit there and, and let that sad music kind of wash over me and let me just feel the emotions because I, I don't want to mess up his name. Um, I think it's Gustavo. 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 Last of Us music composer. Let me see, let me see. Gustavo. It's definitely Gustavo something. No, no, Gustavo Santo Lala. Oh, you're getting it. I can't. I can't roll my L's or R's or whatever. But it's Gustavo Sant. S a n t a o l a l l a. S-A-N-T-A-O-L-A-L-L-A. Yeah. So, uh, um, wait, wait, wait. Just trust me here. I got this. Yeah, right? Go let for it. Flex my Hispanic muscles here. Gustavo Santo Lolala. There Santo you go. Lala. Yeah, that sounds about right, right? Right there. Um, you know what? I did it with some Spanish flair, so either way, <laughs> am I wrong or am I right? Again, I confidence. That's you right. say it with gusto. Um, I, think, <laughs> I think that's fantastic. I know there was a Last of Us concert already, but it wasn't, like, streamed anywhere. Um yeah. Because that's when, like, I believe Troy and Ashley were on stage actually singing or doing a deleted scene of some sort that I think made it sway into part two. I forgot what kind of mm-hmm. what the exacts are there, but I, I love that music so much. Just hearing a chord will make me cry from multiple tracks in that game. Um, it's just so beautiful and yeah. so minimalistic, too. Like, man, Gustavo's a genius uh another one would be uncharted just bombastic action set piece music would be really really cool and the other one we already have uh final fantasy music Mm. um although actual performed by an orchestra would be great i heard the the last couple have just been like them playing the tracks on a computer (laughs) with very minimal orchestra playing which is kind of bogus um but yeah those would be my picks. Yeah. I always forget the instrument that Gustavo plays. It's it's called the Ron Rocco. Oh. And I just love that. It's a variant of yeah. another instrument. Charang. Was it? I'm sorry. Was it Charango or something like that? It's, it's uh, I like it. It's like a little mini, it's, like a little banjo. It's, like it's one of my banjo. I love it. favorite moments of the Last of Us documentary. Yeah. It is, it's when Neil is there sitting there listening to the music. And he just turns to Gustavo and like punches him, punches him in the arm, like 
you did it, man. I don't know how, but like that, this is it. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Without even saying any words, he just hit him. He gives him a look like, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Let me just see. Man, DeLorean theme. I know the, the theme for the Mandalorian started off with, I believe it was like some variation of the clarinet. Like this one guy just bought the, 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 the guy that did the orchestra at Ludwig, uh, Oh God, I can't. It's it's no reason. I'm sorry, Ludwig. Uh, he he wrote or he. he I'm not that 50. kind of white, so I can't. I can't say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, he bought like 50 clarinets and he played the theme that way. That's how he Ooh. originally. Uh, that's cool. The theme. Yeah, yeah. I watched that on a documentary because that's that's what type of life I live. Okay. Uh, next question. <laughs> no, you didn't answer. Which one was you? No, it's Ghost of Tsushima by. Oh Omar. yeah, you did. Yeah. My bad. Hide indoors writes in and she got her ps5 she goes yeah um so if you haven't heard i just ordered my ps5 i plan on playing astros first because duh so what should i play second i claimed all the playstation plus titles since november uh so those are options but i'm not opposed to buying something new and shiny also thanks for everybody in discord which you should be a part of it by now if you ain't for tagging me when they went on sale and then inevitably sending positive vibes each time I couldn't secure one. It definitely helped me feel less bummed about it. I'm going to say this. Bucks say X. It. Yeah. I'm glad you said it because I was going to. <laughs> yeah. I know Bucks Catherine X enough. I think Bucks X is going to be great. Bucks X is great. Uh, also, like, Roger and Clank. That too. It's... No, but besides Astro, the best showcase of a PlayStation Five and what the DualSense can do, mm, mm. Uh, and Miles too, because I know I know Catherine likes uh, Spider Man twenty eighteen. So Miles is is what fantastic. about the show? Because I know y'all like baseball. I think I remember in past conversations, Catherine has tried it. Okay. I don't know if it's entirely her jam, but so, yeah, yeah, the show is fantastic. Um, systems heavy. Right, it, it, it's a it's a simulation experience. It's yeah. not an arcade right. sports yeah. title. Yeah, I would like give me an arcade baseball game, please. High heat baseball, MLB Slugfest, where you would like run out to the pitcher's mound and just beat the pitcher up. Don't with call the ball me out on my bat. bullshit, Kyle. Please don't. <laughs> Why? I know my sports. Games, I know you do. Man. You do. <laughs> Triple play baseball, where the home run derby was like you were just. Toys in Toy Story hitting home runs in the living room. Just that give was me great. backyard baseball. Just give me backyard yeah. baseball. Give me, yeah. I think her name's like Alessandra. She just knocks him out. Give me Pablo. Time. Pablo, number one pick every time. Uh, Moody writes in. I think we're going I think we need to save this for a topic. So I just want to give him credit for it. We have, we are pretty much halfway through the year. So what are your top three games so far in 2020? Spoiler alert. I think we're going to do this in July when news gets a little slimmer, but in no okay. particular order, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Three games, go. Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart. Okay. Returnal. Okay. Emily is away three. Ooh, okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to go Ratchet and Clank. I'm going to say Resident Evil. And then I'm going to say Hitman 3. Oh. Did what? you finish Village, by the way? I don't know. Did I? Oh. <laughs> Kyle, since we're running a little long in the show, is yeah. there one thing in particular that you've played? Maybe not Ratchet, because it'd be three weeks in a row. Yeah, and we're, we're going to do a Road yeah. to Greatness probably next week about it. So, um, before we head out, what you've been playing, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because I know what I'm going to say, and people are going to be very mad. Uh-oh. Uh Immediately after getting the Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart Platinum Trophy last mm-hmm. night at like 3.30 in the morning, I was like, great, I have my 100th Platinum. Now it's time to get some easy plat. So I went back to those Bible oh Church God. games, Breakthrough Gaming. I got three of those in 20 minutes. I have many more downloaded. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I've been itching. I'm like an addict. I got I got my my nutritious meal in Ratchet and Clank. Uh-huh. And now I have all these other easy plats that are just waiting to What's be the- obtained. <laughs> Listen. I'm I'm 33 plats. 
Some of them yeah. are the IMAO plats because I want to, there are some games that I really love that I haven't gotten the platinum for or because like they're too hard or whatever. Right. Sure. So like I only platinum games. I really genuinely love. Mm-hmm. What's, what's up with this? <laughs> you say it all the time. It's a, the game is a game. Greg Miller comes out yeah. and shows like the game is the, you get all these. I'm like, that's not, that's it's your cheat meal, man. It, it's fun to it. Okay. Honest, honest, serious answer. I, as a kid love games where you chase high scores. I still mm-hmm. do. That's why mm-hmm. I love Pac-Man. I love Tetris. Sure. Seeing my trophy level rise and my trophy count rise feels like a high score to me. Fair. Okay. So, so getting new trophies and, and, and games that are quick ones gives me that that kind of adrenaline rush is not the word because it's not really it's me sitting on the couch staring yeah. blankly at a screen, much like I'm doing when I watch Sexy Beasts on Netflix after we're done. Oh my but God. It, it's it's very much just like I don't know the feeling of accomplishment, I guess. Even mm. though like it's yeah, I don't know. I just love video games, man. So trophies are cool. Okay. All right. I realize it's not everyone's thing. That's fine. So I've been playing a few games. I'm just disappointed. I'm not upset. I'm disappointed. Okay. <laughs> You're disappointed me over trophies. Okay. Yeah. That works. I get it. I just don't see eye to eye with it. A year and a half, Joe, I had to sit through on this show with you talking about every week. Oh, yeah. I played Fortnite. But I've I learned that lesson. I don't I, talk about her I anymore. I don't care. I don't she's, care about She's Fortnite. done with me. We broke up a lot. I understand that. But a half of this show's lifetime, Joe, mm-hmm. a half Every week was Fortnite. <laughs> Every week. But when you get in dubs like the way I get them, you want to talk about it because it's an event. And now I just share them on Twitter. Quick little no scope. Boom. Here you go. I'm good at games. Proof. Okay. So I bought a lot of games, but I haven't really played a lot of them. So this is what I'm talking about here. Okay. Yeah. 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 Metro Exodus. Ooh. I got to get over this, this hump here with this game. The protagonist doesn't talk. So everybody's having these one like sided conversations. And they stare at you for a second, and then they keep on going. I'm just like, ah, I'm tired of this. Give me a protagonist with thoughts, feelings, ideas, please. But, that's why I felt with that game too. That's why I stopped. It. it that said, it, just something about it. It looks beautiful, Kyle. Oh, I no doubt it it's does. got a PlayStation Five upgrade. It's it gives you the haptics. It gives you the adaptive triggers, Ooh, nice. the lighting, and all that. Uh, uh, 4K textures game looks insanely good, so I want to go back and 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 go back to it because it's only like 19 bucks. I was like, why not? Did you play the first two? No. Okay. So maybe that's my problem. Maybe I need to just go all the way back. The other game I I tried out for literally five minutes, but I'm like, okay, I feel you because I've never played a Metroid game. People yell at me about this all the I time. I mean, same. Mm-hmm. And I'm very excited for Metroid Dread. Same. And. They're like, wait, you've never played like a Metroid game? I'm like, no, nah, not really. Uh-uh. Does like Back to the Future on the SNES count? They're like, nah. Uh. Oh, I played plenty of Metroidvania games. Yeah. Just not Metroid. <laughs> not me, dude. Not me. So they're like, try Axiom Verge. And Ooh. I was like, okay. And it's like only like five, four or five bucks. And holy shit, Steel. that game's great. I can it's also great. see why people really love games like Returnal. That is just like, this is a Metroid game. I'm already seeing the correlations between these two. So, yeah, awesome. And then our good buddy Sin Vendetta went, Joe, you love Dark Souls. You love Demons. You love a good From game. You need to go play Salt and Sanctuary. So he gave me a PSN code. He's like, play this game, no excuses. So I played Salt and Sanctuary. It is literally 2D Dark Souls. That's awesome. It's kicking my ass. I'm like at the third boss, and it's just punching me in the face. I love it so far. The only thing I don't love about it is the art style. Not a fan of it. Okay. Not a fan of it one bit. Uh, Because it kind of looks like something out of E-Bomb's world. It's kind of what I've gotten out of it. Uh, But, yeah, it's it's really awesome. So if you really are dying for... Yeah, literal, <laughs> metaphorically here for like Elden Ring or any from game. You got that thirst, that hunger. Go get this game, man. It's Did, fantastic. Have you ever played the Surge games? No. They are Souls-like games. 
I know our mm. friend of the show, Emmett Watkins, loves the search mm. and will sing its praises. So I I think you should give that a shot too okay. if 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 you need that itch even more after Salt Sanctuary or not. Cause... The one game that I I've been going back to and played the most this week is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And I've gotten oh. to the same point. Cause I cause our, our friend Donnie from PSVG, I saw a few screenshots. I'm like, man, this game's beautiful. Let me go back. This game's combat is the really thing that's turning me off from this game. I like every time I play it, I'm like, man, I miss Odyssey. Really miss Odyssey. I think Odyssey's combat was my favorite here. And every You're saying time, they went too far with Valhalla? Yeah. Every every time I'm playing it, I'm like, this would be great if it was just I feel like they haven't settled on what combat they want to have in these games. That's fair. And um yeah, so I'm still playing it. Still going through it, but I'm just I'm just waiting for Scarlet Nexus, man. That said, I want to end the show on something we both got. These dual sense controllers Ooh. got. Yeah. Midnight Black is behind me. Yeah, um, mine are over there. Yeah, I'm holding the what is it? The Cosmic Cherry? Red. Cherry? Cosmic Red. Yep. What are your what are your thoughts? Is this a pink controller or is this, this a red controller? This is the new Lanel. So funny you say that. Uh one of my nieces came down earlier to, to grab the switch to play and she was like, Wait, you have a pink controller without me even saying anything. It's like it's red. What are you talking about? To me it's red. Mm-hmm. But apparently, some people see pink. So it's very much you can put pink in this. I think yeah. I wouldn't doubt you here. But I think it's it's more like um like a like a maroonish, if that makes any sense. Uh, magenta. Magenta. Yeah. There you go. That's the name. So yeah, I I like it though. Like oh, I, I think love it. In in depending on where the light hits and what film you're using when you're taking a picture, you could say that this is pink for sure. But Honestly, I really dig the color, and I think it's uh yeah, it's nice. G- g- I, give me more of this. Give give us Sony Design Labs. Give us a design your version, labs. Please. please. All right, you saw the abomination please. we put up on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> the Xbox PlayStation One, and then and then what Xbox goes out and, and and puts out they have Space Jam Two controllers. Yeah, but they look bad, so we don't have to. Be oh no, about I no no, I want that Tune Squad One. Real bad. Really? You want the Toon Squad? Because I got excited Joe? for a second when I looked at it, and I was like, oh, this is not see-through? All right. Nah, oh, okay. yeah. The There are a few things I love more than PlayStation and video games, mm-hmm. and one of those things is Space Jam. Okay. I love it. Okay. So anything Space Jam is. Like, I was in Target yesterday when I bought, I don't know if you can tell, it's very dark. No. My Batman cowl, a Lego Batman cowl. Oh, right? very is there. cool. Uh, they have Space Jam 2 action figures, and I almost debated on picking up the LeBron James one. Just to have. LeBron James. Yeah. yeah. That said, that's been the trophy room this week. What a week it's been. I do want to warn people because, you know, it can happen any moment. PSX, State of Play, the Future Games, whatever they call it. PlayStation's yeah. Direct or E3 Supplement Show could be imminent so we may do a second show this week next week or in the weeks to come so be on the lookout and make sure you're following us at ps trophy room so you get the up-to-date uh uh, stuff as it happens yeah as it breaks so hey herman drop the date come on you're here in july let's go let's go there's no zelda all right (laughs) what is it uh no, 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 Kryptonians. Okay, this world will fall to Horizon Forbidden West. <sighs> Zack Snyder, man, that was actually a good movie. I liked it. Kyle, is there anything you'd like to spotlight before you head on out of here? Absolutely. Uh, total tally count for Bloodborne Elden Ring uh, mentions uh, twenty two. Uh-huh. I could have missed a couple. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I did good. I think. Week. Yeah, wasn't too bad. Okay. I thought it would be way more. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Case up on Twitter and on PSN. You can follow all the 61 Indie coverage I do for indie games over at 61indie.com and twitch.tv slash 61indie, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, all those fun things. Spelled out 61, S-I-X-O-N-E, indie.com. Uh, 
we're taking maybe a week break because E3 really burnt us out. And uh, I I will 100% be getting into that in the post show. Um, I, I, I got very drained at the end, the last day of our our E3 coverage at 61 Indy. Yeah. Um, uh, re- my Resident Evil 2 Claire run on mm-hmm. Twitch will be happening probably next week. So mm-hmm. be on the lookout for that. You can find me over at Mr. Badman on Twitter. You can follow us over at PS Trophy Room on Twitter. You can follow the show on YouTube, the video version uh, at the Trophy Room Show. And you can follow us wherever you find your podcast service of choice, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Radio Five Stars, whether that's Spotify, Google Play, wherever you find your podcast service of choice, you can find the Trophy Room there. So with all that said, with all that out of the way, everybody, keep your wits about you, keep hunting, and keep playing PlayStation. See you guys.